Greetings everyone and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4, the Fire Rises sub-mod, and I'm your host, Mr. Milk Lovers. Uh, we're pushing through with the Union of America. Um, last time we saw quite a few different things solidify. Brigham's army is looking pretty thick. APLA is doing okay. Uh, the state of New Mexico is taking up a good chunk of Arizona. And Texas, uh, Texas is actually unified under Greg Abbott, look at that. We got the Confederates in the south, we got the AD guys in the far south, and Southern Federal Command looks like it's going to fall apart, but we've got signing the Economic Freedom Act. I want to thank Senator Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren for their tireless efforts to help the American people. This act is theirs. Americans have tight finances. The recession that Barack and I had to deal with was gone, but the wounds inflicted on Main Street USA have not fully healed. For much of America, the old economic formulas don't work. The industry is revitalized, but some areas rely on coal or other outdated models. Uh, cannot be so simply rejuvenated. Minority areas have long struggled with poverty and racism, and no policy initiative has been strong enough to overcome that dark legacy. The tides of modernity and the legacy of the past that hangs over our nation prompted us to look for new measures. A solid system of economic aid for the unemployed, as well as a package to ease workers out of dying industries, can finally be established by the SAC. So, so many Americans have been caught in a tailspin of debt and poverty, with no help beyond paltry welfare, which they often don't qualify for due to their meager employment. This act will make sure that, so, that many Americans living at the margins will be able to have the funds necessary to manage their finances and prove themselves through education of the means. Americans may not rest easy. So get a little more progressive support, a more political power. At 14 more days of the rabbit hole. And we're actually doing okay against Patriot up uh, front. So, um, just had to solidify our line a little bit more. Throw in our guys here, because uh, they are, as you can see, just coming at us with everything. We actually were able to take out Michigan pretty easily, actually, with our forces. And now we've got a bunch of uh, guys up here. Conservative spending belt. We're building a little bit. I want to build a supply hub up here, but there's no real good supply area to really build. And that takes quite a while to build, so uh, we're going to be losing supply up here just a little bit. Hopefully we can defend really well. Ooh, that is not good as well. So we're getting ready for the guys here. My goal is to help hold against the Patriot Front in the Northeast. We've got some comms to go through too. And then get rid of them. Because that is by far the most important goal for us right now. Getting rid of the Northeast and solidifying it under our control. Um, beyond that, uh, we'll see what happens, really. 2023, anything else here? Not so much so, and that's not bad. That wouldn't really help us out that much. Do we have anything for industry in 2023? Yes, we do. That'd be good. So let them struggle here. We're definitely going to lose this area here, unfortunately. Um, I hope they kill each other over here as well. Got some comments. Oh, comments. Like I said, comments. Ooh, we got a lot of congressional support. That's pretty good. Countryside insurgency, unfortunately. We have no money. That's pretty normal. We're doing encourage liberal war hawks. The majority of our population is either against or apathetic to our ongoing war with the constitutionalists. There's a minority group that is fully supportive of our warfare. This group of liberal war hawks have been amongst the most passionate supporters, both in terms of recruits and support for government. Therefore, it's only natural that we support this growing movement in our party. This support might determine whether we overrun Denver or the constitutionalists overrun DC. Hopefully, that doesn't happen. That we get overrun. Race against the clock. Um, extend the supply network. That could help out. The union's officers is staff is a mixed bag. Thanks for possession of most of the federal army, your ranks consist of both those with seniority, experience from the past conflicts, as well as fresh graduates who have found themselves with a talent for leadership within the battlefield. While the presence of younger people achieving offer status is ultimately a good sign of future strategic promise, a number of shortcomings within their command performances have been noticed, largely due to a lack of infield experience and a lack of familiarity with a conflict as large as this one. In addition to this, older officers have begun to experience difficulties with updating their methods, likely for similar reasons regarding the nature of this war. An inexperienced or otherwise rigid officer corps is sure to translate into poor decisions later on to avoid this. We may begin an effort to retrain our officers in order to better suit their leadership skills <coughs> toward current situation and ensure that our men are in good, capable hands for the fight ahead. So, yeah, this is considering we go out right here. Oh, well, that's super cool. I guess down in Central America. Um, President Translation, 49 days. He's. Chris has lettuce for now, but we're going to get fuzzy around the edges, which is not ideal. Um, so we're holding it off as best we can. Anyone else we can choose down here, perhaps? No? I guess genius. Well, it's good to have a genius on our side. But yeah, we're holding pretty well. We're actually attacking in here as well. Uh, you guys are going to go here. You're going to help support the defense down here for now. Because it's a it's pretty mixed bag. They mostly have militia, which we're fine with. We're holding. Against Trump, we're holding. Uh, no big issues, really. Uh, for now. But Liberals proposed a military spending bill, which I, pretty much, I think I read last time, so. Lose a little bit of progressive support. Well, what's their support like? Oh, and Progressives proposed a social spending bill. You get less influence, but more support. You 
you know what? If we lose a little bit more conservative support, that's fine. And with this one, we build all the things a little faster, less liberal support. Or less influence, more liberal support. We can actually get some conservative support too. I'm okay with that. It balances things out a little bit more. Which is, like I said, which is good. I can't win here, but the Germans are attacking there, so. I'm not worried about uh, Trump attacking us. I'm more worried about losing the Southern Federal Command and exhausting the Patriot Front. Because right now, what are the casualties like? What are we missing? Oh, that's fine. <clears throat> We've taken 22,000. We've actually inflicted a lot of casualties. But the most important thing is probably limiting enemy vehicles and tanks. Of course, fighting over the water is a bad, 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 bad idea. But there's something that looks like a lot of attrition. Well, at least in the north here. You guys can go in here too. That'd be fun. APLA declared war on them. Adenbaugh declared war on these guys down the south, which is actually probably really good. Rather than not fight the Nazis, if we lose this, this isn't. Ooh, we're losing here too. That's not good either. Let's get in there. Let the armor hold. What do we got here? Air Force stuff? Yes. Are these mutually exclusive? No, they're not. Interception. This is mutually exclusive. Interception. Air superiority. Alright, so we got this going. Uh, we want this guy. Or is there anyone else we can use here? Oh, we need more command bar. God damn it. We need 165, huh? Hmm. Or will any of these laws help change things for us? Moderate welfare, near zero interest rates, business taxes, import economy, combat equality, fierce training program. Get more organization, female empowerment. Moderate security probably wouldn't be too bad to do either. Let's go and grab you though. I think you'd be quite good for that. Corporate new recruits. It's not bad. Population. We could use, but it says the army. Modify army recruit costs. I wouldn't mind getting this one. We do need this one. But, like we said, we're going to go with this one next. We're still holding. Which is great. And they're still attacking, which is a little surprising. God dang it. God, you're getting so The Nazis are going crazy against the Confederates. That's kind of wild to see. It's definitely a civil war. Come on. Don't lose, Federal Command. I do not want to fight the Ottenbaffen divisions. Oh, God. This is concerning. How much equipment do they have, man? Get in there. They don't have a ton of manpower, which is good to see. They have quite a bit of equipment, though. They really do. Lobby for progressives. Yeah, we probably could. Ah, progressives are here, too. It's fine. Fine, don't lose it. Yeah, these guys are just insane. Constantly attacking us like crazy. Holy cow. Oh, that's not good. That's really bad in the north. We're getting so close to just taking this, but then we run out of steam. is good. Infrastructure. We're not building infrastructure though now. I don't want to lose anything else here. Lose three civvies for three millions. That wouldn't be terrible. I wouldn't mind removing the oil crisis though. Uh-huh. We did do a pass Economic Freedom Act too, so. <clears throat> pass a Pro Act. 
Oh, it deals with the establishment. The Liberal Caucus in the Democratic Party is, as expected, the primary caucus within the party itself, making up the majority of establishment politicians within the Democratic Party. Adherence to the long-enjoyed Washington economic consensus, a commi commitment to moderate policies regarding matters of a mixed economy, and their staunch commitment to the principles of freedom and equality have been a staple of D.C. politics for quite some time now. With the breakout of the war on American soil, it's pivotal that we begin making deals with them in order to maintain party unity and appeal to their supporters across the Union. It will serve us well to be able to pass some much needed uh, and long-awaited legislation. All good things can come for pleasing a base, especially now. We do want to recruit some more people here, though. They are absolutely wildly aggressive here. I'm honestly very surprised that they have not broken yet. Where are you guys? Is that Yaki? Did I not realize that that wasn't Yaki yet? You know what? We'll lower our resistance there. Our intelligence there. Hello. Oh man, they're starting to slowly break our lines. But we'll stop them with this. A little more reinforce rate, a little more organization. Oh, that is not good. Uh, progressive proposal, special social spending. Where are we at for this? Oh, Republicans leave the coalition. Well, goodbye, Republicans. Agility be nice. Our party, our democracy. Uh, thank you, uh, Senator Schumer, for that wonderful speech. I couldn't have said it better myself. Our party has been the front lines in the war against Trumpism since its inception. While the Republican friends sat on the sidelines trying to get that madman to see sense, we are warning the American people of his life just as we attempted to deliver for the American people in negotiations. This isn't the first time our party has been on the right side of history. Back during the Reagan years, when everyone was shouting cut, 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 it was Democrats who tried to pump the brakes, ditto in 2008. As the war rips our country apart, it'll be up to the Democratic Party to put it back together. We shall. Uh, <clears throat> repair the direct damage and sweep away the rod of austerity and trickle down. We must fight to restore American industry and rebuild what's left. It'll be up to the Democrats to heal the division and work through the lies. As we all the crush of demons of the far left and far right extremism. Well, uh, well, uh, ex excuse me, anyways. Who? Um, Redskins clock. Pillars has the army. Fail. Make no mistake, this war is more than just a mere bloody dispute regarding the transfer of power. In essence, it's a fight for the very values that this nation has been built upon and are fine towards. Democracy, liberty, and equal rights for all. The Union stands the last true bastion of these values, once held dearly by every sane American. It's incredibly important that we instill these values into our soldiers, to remind them what they're fighting for and what, we laid, that, that they, what they lay down their lives to daily to protect. For a good soldier fights not because of, they hate what lies ahead of them, but because they love what lays behind them. It's becoming quite concerning now. Man, Ottenboff and no, Division are doing an insanely good job. Did they get any att extra attack on and whatnot? Uh huh. Uh huh. Low national popular support, of course. Economic restructuring. Second Continental Army. Wait. And then political cornucopia. Can you guys actually win somewhere? They could destroy the League of the South, that'd be kind of awesome. We're still winning here now. Oh god damn, we have no command power. taxes. We need the money. Buy corporate influence. Uh, refresh liberties. Uh, foil and certain plots. 
Okay, that seems like a good idea. Well, god dang it, I just said stop it. Four divisions here, huh? Oh, oh god. Oh, what is this? So it says the army. Oh boy. Hey, you got four more National Guardians. That's good. Um, we've been trying to stock up soldiers here, but I'm less concerned about that now than I'm over here. Sure, we'll take some a better arty. Yeah, it'd be great. Grab you. Race against the clock. We're not really attacking important recruits. While our new recruitment programs have succeeded in encouraging our citizens to enlist in mass, this has presented us with a new problem. The flood of recruits has created a backlog of basic training has been a headache for the high command. We must address this problem immediately by properly funneling recruits into new units so they all receive adequate training. We cannot allow this problem to persist or our army will become bogged down, and unable to operate. Having the Nazis do this has actually been probably the best thing for us so far. There you go, there you go. Good. Confederacy is restored. Uh, I haven't seen this one yet. A prince before which you contend is bound to assert, assert itself. There may be another time in, in, in another form. Was not expecting to see the Nazis back, but here we are. Who leads it? Michael Hill. Confederal system. Southern Nationals in terrible industry, pretty normal. Spirit of the South. Battle of America, National Assistance. Heralds of the Apocalypse. Wow. Maybe you like to play war in Arizona and New Mexico. <clears throat> My god, are we struggle busting hard here still? They're losing more manpower at least. Bunch of fascists. So we saw that slow, they got another injection of money. Uh, 35% uh, lobby against conservatives. Loyal. Let's we'll see. Uh -huh. Mandate female service. If we wish to finally end our recruitment crisis, then all must do their part regarding uh, regardless of the gender. To this end, we'll mandate female participation in the draft and encourage young women to enlist. While this will surely anger the more liberal parts of our society, it's only fair that women do their part in our fight to preserve the union. For when they see what they have to lose, they will not think twice about joining the fight. Oh, Phoenix. I get more HP though, at least. Come on, I guess. Progresses. Well, I guess. Zelensky is elected in Ukraine. You know what? You guys can hold. Oh, crap. What happened here? Wait, where did you guys come from? What? Hello? You know what? I've got you. You're not doing very much right now. Where did you guys spawn from? Jesus. Go, go, go. Save our divisions up here. Need more command. 
power. You got plenty of fuel though. That's pretty nice. Very infrastructure. Would radar maybe actually help? That of Albuquerque. Get it there. Go ahead and around. There you go. Good. Good. Oh god. This bus gonna suck. Good. Sahel security plot plan. And okay, we got him. That's good. Bunch of freaking Confederates. Yeah, you better lose a freaking war. How many minutes we lost? Forty-three thousand versus one hundred ninety-two thousand against Trump. One hundred twenty thousand against these guys. victory. Oh. oh man. One more command power too. Sortie efficiency, ground support, escort. Oh, we're not supposed to be bombing, so. I doubt you guys could do it in here, but you could try. What I found out that worked so far was that it's like doing very, very fast pincer movements. It's extremely fast. Oh, you're actually able to get in there. Look at that. So if you move fast enough. You guys can do actually very, very well. Like this, maybe. Outside of contracts. So efficiency gain. Be nice. Come on. Get in there too. Sure. Um, brigade. Infantry is nice. It's for em that stuff. Let me go this way though. Holy crap. I'm okay with this one for now. We don't need this one yet. I don't mind doing this one. We do need that one. A force progress, daily command. Yeah. He's fuzzy around the edges. He's foggy as a mirror. God. It's like real left Joe Biden. Uh. APLA is coming for everybody. As the Nazis have won in the South, this is not good. <laughs> I apologize for taking so long, too, because I, like I said, I've never done this before, so. No Boeing. No Boeing. Oh, Boeing. Oh, these military development increases. That's good. An equal opportunity. Every day I'm astounded at the achievements of the American women. Despite being second class citizens for most of history, they rocketed to the top in science, government, and business the moment the shockers of Boeing practices were taken off. The oppression of women was just fired throughout history as being necessary for their own good. They're too empty-headed, malleable, and na naive to be treated as equals. They're placed within the home and the home alone. They did great right there, but their talents could have been used better elsewhere as well. Well, what, what prevents women from going into the armed forces? Try and justify without sounding like those old men who thought women couldn't possibly work and live on their own, that they could own property and run businesses, I dare you. Women are just as responsible, if not more men are, more than men are. Uh, science shows us that women are better leaders than most men, that they're better teamwork. And we can also, well, uh, can, can die just as good as any man. High command. Oh, now I need the command part for this. This would actually help us out quite a bit, too. Oh, they definitely. Here, one's like, oh. So now, what do we got here? Race against a clock. I wouldn't mind doing this one because this would actually help us out quite a bit. Our taking a direct 
Direction. Regarding the def defining of the values in which your army fights for, as it may prove beneficial, whether a union having submitted itself as a side that fights for social and political progress of all types, be that minority and equal equality rights, political and economic reform, and in any other modern cause for freedom and tolerance, we've seen a notable uptick in both recruitment and support from the populace. With these recent successes, it's high time to make use of them. Many activists that took to the streets to protest before the war were among the most staunchly committed to progress and anti-authoritarianism of all stripes, especially in the face of a Trump administration. By encouraging and mobilizing the members and activists from pre-war movements, we'll see an even greater rise in eager recruits, a desire to both fight for a better future and a more equal modern nation, as well as defending it from those who wish to plunge us into a backwards notion of what America should be. With some of the most vocal anti-Trump individuals in our ranks, they will undoubtedly fight with a zeal in the face of such familiar tyranny. Yeah, if we can blitz through things, that's not bad. But if we can't blitz through things, well, it's not so good. Eighty-four percent is pretty good, actually. Take, take a gander at it. Once APL comes for these guys, it's going to be pretty much over. I wonder if Adam Boffin is going to take out Texas or not first. Have these guys improved anything here yet? Political according to OPS, can count it. They have been a little bit. Economic reconstruction, pop, low popular support. Uh, hello. Ah, we actually got a Syracuse. Look at that. Good. It's Grant, huh? Do they have any resistance there? Honestly, they don't have that much. More than 8% surrender progress. Okay, with this much command power, then we can actually do something here, maybe. Lobby against conservatives. Less support, but they get less influence, which you do like. They're rebellious. Well, we got 17% support, which is not great. Probably do this one, honestly. And uh, lobby for progressives. And this should hurt their ability to wage war by taking a little more attrition. Now one step back, on land and sea and air, our forces of battle for the fate of our democracy. Nowhere in the world is seeing a conflict ever so important. If we lose this fight, we'll surrender to our enemy, to a tyrant, a fascist, communist, or worse. We've made so much progress, so many Americans have been brought back into the embrace of their families, so many towns and cities have been liberated, and so many war criminals have been snuffed out. Yep, we've lost a great deal. The burned prairies, national treasures bombed by terrorists and countless soldiers' lives. None of that has happened in vain, my friend and my son. I mean, I feel every soldier is my son. I didn't die in vain. You may hear irresponsible reporters, enemy propaganda, confused citizens, spreading rumors and jeering over supposed defeats. We may lose ground, but not without a fight. We may lose cities, but not before ensuring that nothing is left for them to enjoy when we withdraw. They may claim victories, but we shall make even our retreats grievous for them. They will say we are on the back foot, but we are only getting started. Now look, if you don't believe in victory, get behind us. Yeah, I sound like Joe Biden. Definitely. Finish the fight. <clears throat> From initial situation upon the outbreak of the war, the state of our armed forces and its rejuvenation has been a long and difficult journey to rectify and improve. A journey that has ultimately paid off, in the highest of regards, where there had once been disorganization and ineffectiveness, there is cohesion and professionalism, prepared and knowledgeable in the means of fighting on American soil. Where there have been disloyal and defective soldiers now stand strong prob forces vindicated in their desire to strike down the enemies of our free democracy where they stand, at home or anywhere else. Now, the army of the Union is one unraveled in their devotion against tyranny. And with the bulk of the reforms being finished, all that is left to finalize is the last few reforms needed to truly ensure that our forces will forever act as a bulwark against traitors and other radicals seeking to destroy the fundamental principles of this nation. For as long as they stand, we'll never yield in the face of tyranny and darkness. Well, we're doing our part. How much more does Trump have to throw at us? A lot of divisions, less than a million map, about roughly about the same as us. They're out of equipment too. How are you guys not out of equipment either, though? Dutch King assassinated. I feel like you guys are running out of equipment as well, which is finally great. Allied with a bunch of Nazis. Jesus. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'll gladly take the army XP, but still. So it looks like we made the radio station. Or radio. Yeah, which is good. Um, I'm just worried about these guys down here. A bunch of zealots. Do you dare build more like cities and such? I 
Ooh, you know what? Uh, supplies getting through here, though. I don't want to take any more attrition. Pass the bill. We have a lot of conservative influence. Uh, they're rebellious. Literally no support. That's fine. Whatever. Not completed. Work progress? Yeah. Fog is a mirror. Lights on, but nobody's home. That's pretty normal. He is a winner. He might be able to with me on the offense. Good God. Those are comments clued. Can we see an Ottenbach and playthrough? Uh, eventually, I, I would. I, I absolutely will play them. And I'll probably get demonetized. Oh, they actually do have unique focus tree. Yeah, definitely. I'll definitely play as these guys. I heard it's like the hardest faction to play as, though. The absolute hardest faction to play as. Um, there we go. Let's see. Democracy is non negotiable is another comment. Uh, someone else says, don't know what the mod pretends, but Joe Biden is supported by corporate America. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's, he's, he's Joe Biden. Don't say America without big business influence. Best America, 10 out of 10. When this is done, someone else says, try Trump America. It's a heck of a ride. That sounds like fun. Oh, man, we're actually going to lose here. Go here. Go there. <clears throat> I don't want to lose Joe Biden yet. A war on one. While I'm grateful for the University of Tennessee's granting me time to speak with all of you this evening. I'm afraid I might be a little down. I just got off a call with my Secretary of State, Lloyd H Houston. I was just informed that one of the thousand men were just lost in the front. Today was apparently a bloody one. One thousand men, can you believe it? A lot of them were kids, just like yourself. I knew some of them. I had, I had to have. I've spoken so many times before so many soldiers, it's insane what the enemy has put us through. What they're putting the country through, and for what? What could they hope to achieve when everything's in ashes? We're not going to let any of this go. When we're victorious, all of this will be avenged. Those who get by through bullying, lies, and threats will be held accountable for what they have wrought. The truth will be thrown from the citadels, and the memory shall be expunged from the slam. Mark my words, we will win. Uh, and if, well, when, uh, they'll, mm, mm. So we want to get through that, because that gives us quite a bit of stuff here. Uh, land doctrine would be bad. Uh, there's nothing major here that I really care about. Wow. Bust of trust. The term too big to fail has been one coined by many establishment politicians over the years since 2008 financial crisis, which brought our eco economy into a lot of limelight. City to represent the necessity of this country's all-powerful businesses to the continued stability of not just our own markets, but the world's as well. Through this colossal importance came great influence, allowing leverage over legislators and the policies that they put forward, be it direct through campaign donations or through vast amounts of corporate lobbying, all done in order to bring the, further the product of, product of profit motives and market successes. With the Civil War throwing a wrench in the status quo, however, we'll see to it that the Union has everything it needs to ensure that its political and economic survival. Sweeping antitrust legislation will be put forward, effectively breaking up these businesses, business giants, and allowing us to see some of their much needed assets for better use, as well as greatly reducing their ability to influence congressional affairs through the prevention of lobbying for business interests. We have to leave politics to the politicians. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I do not understand how, like, we can actually like push through fast and hard enough to get through this. I, I don't know. Like, this is really, really stalematey, which I know this is exactly what the devs wanted, which is fine. Um, it just there's, there's there's not much we can do. I'm not sure what else we could do, especially with Joe Biden going all C now right now, you know. I'm mostly just letting time roll. Uh, there's Navajo Nation APLA. I mean, these guys have infinite like supplies. It seems like. Manpower has decreased, it looks like, a little bit. Gun-wise, I mean, they're out of everything. Yeah, they're still able to put up a pretty good defense. We're doing okay on industry. But, like, what else can we do? Nothing, really. We're good at holding. Plenty of fuel, which is good. I'm going to lower by two, I'm going to ask for another aluminum. Oh. Progressives. Sure. 
Because now they're fighting Trump as well. Which sucks for us. Because I'm sure now we can push probably pretty well. Uh huh. But there's nothing we can do with the Patriot Front trying to beat the crap out of us here. So now we're at kind of the crossroads. You guys are on the front line, which I don't really want to use to use you, use you use you to attack. But it looks like we're going to kind of have to. And then you're going to, have to dig in against APLA. Very all lost, lost, lost of trust. Uh, someone did ask us to do this. So, constitutional revision. The Constitution of the United States, albeit to a brilliant document in many aspects, is now without some glaring fault of its own. While the Founding Fathers is no doubt held future generations in mind when they wrote it, they are either entirely unable to predict just what kind of world we would be living in some 250 years in the future. Despite its importance, we cannot afford to maintain its more outdated principles any further, especially in a time when some of those age-old principles may have led us to the very situation. Even though a much move will face much opposition, we'll make strides to revise and modernize much more untimely elements of the Constitution and its adherents. This will lead to further issues in the future. What is this? Uh, yeah, okay. Alright, you're going in. You should be able to win pretty easily. Oh, we should say the command power too. Crap. Of course, once I play as a Patriot Front some days, I'm like, oh, this is too difficult. Your body needs to be nerfed. Oh, raise motion. Yeah, absolutely. What's the base data gain? Oh, nothing. We get literally nothing here. Okay. Oh, yeah, we're definitely pushing it now. And they're pushing against us still here. I'm just kind of surprised, but whatever. Um, as much as I do want to do this one, we got to save the command power now. But, um, surprise, Texas is holding out for the most part. Yeah, we're definitely pushing in. It's very nice right now, too. Yeah, I got St. Louis, which is awesome. Regulations. I don't know if there's any more political power. Intellectual excellence. Hmm. That's fine for now. Advanced machine tools. A little ahead of time there. There you go. Ooh. Ah, these motion divisions. Nice. Here. Come up out up there. First. They have a ton of influence, holy cow. Uh, excavation 2. Anything else here? So, uh, sure. Yeah, there's no, there's no way we can move on this front. Oh, God dang it. I'm waiting. Die and get this one done. The living, breathing constitution. Some people act like the Constitution is unchanging, stagnant thing. They upload a principle of originalism, which states that we should always work towards what they think the Founders would have wanted regarding the Constitution. I had to tell them that the Founders have been dead for a long time. We have no idea what they would have wanted, and frankly, they wouldn't even understand how different our world is. They didn't have the internet or assault weapons or any other modern innovation, which fundamentally alters how we go about our lives. So why should we just settle with what they wrote? Our Founders understood the limitations. They knew that the institutions needed to adapt and change, and thus promulgated a system to amend. 
to the Constitution, the title of the Bill of Rights, we've had a 15 amendment since, defining our values and how our democracy functions. The rights of minorities within all Americans have been solidified. So much has changed in America lately that we need to revisit the Constitution. We must change the whole thing like the founders did. We must make something new, something that fits our country in all of its diversity. We must take what was great about the old and make new where it fails. So the person who keeps asking me to do this, we did it. Uh-huh. High welfare benefits. Passed the John Lewis Voting Rights Act. Oh, that's not too bad. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 was a piece of legislation for its time, considered by many to be a triumph against racism and other forms of discrimination. While a very noteworthy and useful step towards for equal rights in America, the events of recent years and the increased awareness of the systematic inequality have brought to light some notable shortcomings of the original law. With this in mind, we'll begin an effort to revise and update the Civil Rights Act, adding in some much-needed expansions and protections of minority groups. It was not only better suit the conditions of targeted groups in modern times, but open the door to further reforms in the near future as well. We're very lucky the Nazis did not attack us. Looks like we might have made a circle down here too. Oh, uh, not quite. Darn it. That sucks. Mm, fine, we'll do that one for now. Oh, gotta keep going on this one. Way to provide economic incentives. Amidst these times of troubles, we have been facing extreme challenges and hollowness in every sector, economic hollowness in every sector of the economy. It has been crippling our war effort and the home front, beginning to drain federal funding and reducing economic output, spurring financial disaster. This has been caused by both unemployment and a lack of financial incentives. While we must provide incentives such as subsidies, bonuses, and an increase in salaries to begin revitalizing the war in civilian economies, increasing output and strengthening morale. Uphold American consumerism. American consumerism is the foundation for which our peacetime uh, civilian economy has stood up for decades after the Second World War. Smashed by the ongoing civil war, which has devastated our civilian economy, we should begin launching economic campaigns to increase civilian spending power, restructuring economic materialism, and pulling our economy out of depression. As the saying goes, so as the U.S. consumer goes, so goes the U.S. economy. Nice. More armor. Uh, do we have any armor on here at all? I think I threw all my armor against the Patriot Front. Yeah, I think I did, yeah. That's good. Modify Officer Corps. What do we have here? Disrupt Destruction. Independent Air Force. <sighs> Research. I guess Air Defense is only 5%. It's not much. Uh, let's do Air Wings. Why not? Uh, and field interdiction. Can you actually win here? Oh, yeah. Passing the John Lewis Voting Rights Act, America treats its citizens unequally. As of many inequities, black and brown Americans were once slaves, once second class citizens, and even today still live under the owner's legacies of their past suffering. America's paid for its original sin in diverse ways, and repentance must come. What was originally conceived after our first civil war and formalized after the Civil Rights Act must be strengthened. All citizens must have equal access to our democracy, equal representation. With this act, we can take yet another step in the long road to racial equity. No more shall discriminatory practices be implemented. All redistricting, all laws relating to the vote, must be cleared by the federal government. Gerrymandering shall no longer be permitted, and discrimination based on race, class, local location, or political affiliation shall no longer hold any sway over redistricting. Political gamemanship will no longer interfere with basic functioning of our democracy. The, the, the votes have, we have votes. Never mind doing liberty or death. Yeah, we got weekly change by minus 3%. Ah, that's always good. I can't do that one yet. They're activating, huh? Come on, we gotta keep going. They really want to lose to the Reds, not not us. Yeah, I'm gonna give you guys a break here. Just hold for now. You get first. Didn't even know Somalia was in a war. So are these guys done yet? 
85 divisions, 2024 presidential debate tonight. The network prepares a broadcast. The first presidential debate of 2024, Senator Mitt Romney and President Joe Biden departed to Washington, D.C. and made their way to Baltimore, doubtlessly going through some last-minute rehearsals before the big performances. Betting markets have concluded that it's any man's debate to win, though some candidates uh, have more to lose than others. The candidates' campaigns have carefully managed public expectations, training them uh, to focus on certain issues and zeroing in on other opponents' deficits. Candidate Mitt Romney is America's conservative bulwark who stood against the anti-democratic tides within his own party, fighting against the Trumpian beast, while others in the caucus equivocated and justified. Such actions give him credibility among suburban voters, and the more staunch conservatives had no one else to go to. Romney campaigned on a mixture of Reagan-esque optimism and neoconservative hawkishness, launching stringent broadsides against Trumpism while also promising tax cuts once the war is over. Romney is well likely to present himself as a compassionate conservative who can reliably stand against political extremism. President Joe Biden runs on a very different platform, though. Speaking of burning cities and ashen battlefields, of soldiers returning caskets to green families, of starving refugees and their skeletal children, he is grave and taciturn. The only optimism he exudes is a belief in a final victory over America's domestic enemies. His campaign is martial, a behemoth that calls upon the soldiers at the front, professionals, and the suffering urban masses that promises them succor and military success. The man who will go on the debate stage will not tackle policy, he'll only promise that he will end the bloodshed by any means necessary. I believe in America. Choosing us will give bonuses as the conservatives win in 2024. 2012 avenged. Romney was a man of built on compassion and respect, as most pundits and inspectors of the debate proceeded to label him, yet the debate had a personal meaning to him. In 2012, Paul Ryan, his running mate for the older and true wing of the Republican Party, was slaughtered by Joe in another coordinated debate during the midst of the election cycle, barely being able to get a word out in the wake of such a comprehensive election cycle. Now, the tables have turned, now the aging and declining Biden is the one unable to properly spew out phrases, while the more elegant and relaxed Romney proceeded to dash out fiery blows to the staggered and defeated president. This personal avenging of his disaster within 2012 was simply euphoric. Now, as the destiny of Romney to achieve America's story, no longer the chains of a man locking a proper backbone within the party. The polling effects may be noted to be a major swing, with a disastrous performance of Biden already putting into, into, put into clean and crew, sweeping away the bits and pieces of fracture and broken glass being the result of the debate. No longer the humiliated. I don't get that one for now. Anything else? And lobby against them. What are you building? More roads? Roads and civvies. It's gonna build things faster. Oh, yeah, you know, I'm okay with that one. I'm okay with that one too, that's fine. Whatever. 20% is good. I mean, how many how many did we have? A third of a million? Third African War? How many African Wars have we had? Seems like a lot. How have we not won here yet? Here, I'll fly here. And that really helped us out. Pass the Workers' Bill of Rights. Technological Revolution. Ah, this is fun. The Domestic Workers' Bill of Rights Act is a proposed law guaranteeing domestic workers basic rights such as minimum wage, overtime pay, rest breaks, and safe working conditions. It also includes projections against discrimination, harassment, and retaliation from their employers or other actors. While well, this may spark outrage from certain corporations influenced by our government, or influencing the government, this bill is a necessity to win over the common worker and ensure their freedom. Tracking down on profiteering. War profiteering. One of the most prevalent issues affecting the economy is the copious amounts of profiteering done by corporations, specifically ones with a hand in the military-industrial complex. Not only has it gotten good to the MIC, it has also driven, driven up record amounts of inflation and destroyed civilian spending, pushing up consumer prices. Reckless war profiteering has especially been terrible, with CEOs of major military contractors enjoying a big jump in the value of their personal stock exchange or stock holdings uh, due to the civil war. In a civilized democracy, it has no place and we should try to phase it out as much as possible. With the weight of the second American Civil War upon the Commander Chief's shoulders, the state of President Joe Biden's health has nonetheless taken a hit as of late. With such tremendous stress placed upon the 46th President of the United States, the effects of this conflict have begun to present themselves in his everyday tasks. As of recently, the President began to complain about experiencing headaches and migraines, in addition to increased amounts of physical fatigue and dizzy dizziness as a result. While nothing really to worry about at the moment, the President's age as well as the gravity of this war is expected to only worsen his condition as things continue. A bit of stress is nothing to fuss about. Anyway, let's on. Uh, as present as last year's calendar. Oh god. That's not good. I'm gonna call him Sleepy Joe for a reason. You're actually still trying to attack. Yeah. Let's see what you can do. Because we will launch another push soon enough. I hate the Patriot Front so much.
He's getting stronger and stronger the more we wait, which really, really freaking sucks. I'm actually really interested in playing them then. Attacking us? Come on, APLA, you gotta do something here. Oh, look at that. We passed it. Cracking down on profiteering. Good. Equipment conversion's good. That'll be good. No more attack. That's nice. I don't think we can win if we attack, but we can try it. Well, color me shocked. We're pushing in. We're actually doing okay-ish. Not great. Yeah, we're actually pushing in. All right. Denver, come on, lose Denver. <sighs> Declare victory. Crack down on them, but don't need to. If we can take New York City, that'd be fantastic. Come on. I don't think we can win if we attack. It's fine. the corporations aboard. $10,000 for a rifle, really? This is what we have? This is why we haven't won the war already. It's because there are no patriotism on Wall Street. Or at least it seems that way. We haven't nationalized any company this entire war, not one. We haven't forced any corporate leader to step down, and this is how the corporate world repays us? It's absurd. It's ridiculous. The country needs loyalty from every man and woman. So many workers have given their all producing equipment for the army, only for their bosses to sell it to us for a premium. Due to this, and for many other reasons, the thousands of war refugees taking advantage of, for the soldiers gunned down due to low ammo, for the cities going without water, I will send a national anti racketeering bill. This act will place all corporations under expanded oversight with a federal official over every major corporation contributing to the war effort. You do your part for the country, or we will take that part. National has a war effort, hand on our shoulder. Remove non existent corporate influence. Okay. The corporations at the top of the defense industry have been bleeding the American people dry, and that should, not, that should become obvious with each passing day that the Civil War rages on. Not only do these military conglomerates, such as Lockheed Martin, Raytheon Technologies, North. Northrop Grunman and Boeing hold significant influence politically. They have been engaging in a super abundant amount of war profiteering, something which we have tried to eliminate. They have acted as leeches on our civilian economy, diminishing it and racking up profits while our boys on the ground fight for their lives against tyrants. This is where we, the people, draw a line in the sand and say no more to war profiteering, no more to corporate lobbying, and no more to the private defense industry. We'll naturalize a war effort and crush these roaches before their infestation destroys America further. Hey, we, we, we still keep pushing in. Um, I'm a little apprehensive to start attacking again here, but it looks like I might have an opportunity. I mean, it did build up a lot of max planning, so. Now we're looking not so hot here. Might be able to do okay here, though. Maybe. You do not take New York City. No, they're just recycling their soldiers so fast and not funny.
Oh, we're doing well against Trump now. Oh, god dang it. Come on. Here we got another towel, which is great. It's not, not much worth, though. We're approaching Oklahoma, which is great. We have a ton of divisions here, though. Holy crap. I don't want to take for now. This is looking good. We are in Oklahoma, thank God. And you're about against circle. God dang it. We took Newburgh. It still says green, so I'm, I'm inclined to believe them, but still. It's fine. Ooh, Denver is getting close. Folks did that earlier, too. Anything else here? Ah, that's already. It's fine. Ah. So we got that one done, which is great. Uphold American consumerism next. It's okay, let a little vegetable enjoy his life for a little bit. He's busy. Modular transportation. Come on. Can you take Oklahoma City? Can you cut them down and get all the way to the state of Texas? Probably a bad idea. But we're trying it anyways, because we can. Go to Hugo. There you go. Ah, go here instead. You can cut off New York City, you probably will actually have them. I'll hold it first. Give America awesome. Miss Wall uh, wanted me to come here as a treat for all of you. Well, it's hot as hell and all I have to sit out there, so a treat, uh, so some treat. But anyway, I just want to take a moment and say I'm grateful. America is so grateful to all the grocery store workers who have braved a pandemic and now war. You are ensuring that good, clean, and healthy food gets to the people who need it. You're on the front lines when it comes to rationing, brave and frustrated to enforce the necessary regulations to keep food going to our soldiers and our supply tables. And supply stable. I can't thank you enough. My dad was a working man. He set aside and always, always let us know how lucky we were to live in America, where we could go to stores and get whatever we needed, and a hell of a lot more. He always had us believe it was a privilege. It's our job here in government to keep that privilege going. You and thousands of like you across the U.S. keep the American dream alive. Without you, we'd be in dire straits. Force companies' compliance. Oh, I might as well do that now. Despite the significant contributions to our efforts in building back better, the many corporate uh, corporations operating within our borders have seen it to forgotten their place already. Dozens of reports have been brought to our attention detailing corporations violating federal code, especially the treatment of workers. Corporate discontent with the recent legislation has also been clear. It may spark a wave of corporate dissension and outright ignoring the word of law. This is no place in American society, and we must intervene to ensure corporate compliance. Well, it looks like the APLA has just declared war upon us, unfortunately. Um, Texas, you know what? You're allowed to come on through. We're doing actually really well against Joe, uh, Joe Biden. We are Joe Biden. Uh, America now. And, uh, yeah. It's not going so well for uh, Trump and whatnot. Yes, that's fine, too. Um, joint all domain operations, armored cars, infantry. Get more population, too. Recovery rate. We do have a lot of infantry. Armored cars. That does help infantry here too, though. Get more organization. Get more breakthrough with these guys on recovery rate. But I like backhand blow quite a bit. Can never go wrong with backhand blow. Tax masses. It's fine. Keep it up. <clears throat> and of course, Denver is the frontline city, and it has been for a while. 
And we stopped our attacks, of course, but still. Uh, yeah, New Jersey, sure, why not? Let them attack us like crazy, and then we're gonna attack them again. Come on, we've actually met the front lines here. We cannot let Texas... Hello. Fall. Hello? Why do they have enemy divisions there? Getting what we need. My fellow Americans, you may have noticed some changes in the workplace. Some of you started making military supplies, and some have been moved to networking, and within the military, ensuring supplies get to soldiers. You may be asking, I work for an accounting firm. Why am I doing this? It may seem strange, but I assure you it's necessary. The war effort requires a vast network and dedication from every American. Our military is growing day by day, and is in desperate need of people to smooth over any obstacles to its rapid expansion. One of those obstacles is corporate interference. We accuse no specific firm, but I know of schemes of skirt or directives, an attempt through supposed rounding errors and other means to not have to not have to play the part in the war. We need every citizen self in ensuring this doesn't happen, or if it does, that's discovered quickly. We must also ensure that if no one skims off the top or take away valuable supplies from our troops for nefarious profit. You, you know, help, no, no malarkey. Zero unemployment initiative. Unemployment has been a strain on both our uh, civilian and war economies. It inversely affects the disposable income of our families. A rose purchasing power diminishes morale and reduces our overall output in both sectors of the economy, which has resulted in disaster. We must take as much action as necessary to smash unemployment and bring millions of new jobs into the American economy, or else we face total economic collapse in these trying times. This is very, very worrisome. Joe Biden has the creases. What do you want from us? With the conflict raging onwards, President Joe Biden's health has continued to, deter to, to, to deteriorate over the last few weeks. Regularly, the Commander-in-Chief has been undergoing considerable chest and muscle pain throughout his body, as his joints have grown rather stiff due to his high levels of discomfort. In several cases, in which he has overexerted himself. He has noted significant pains in his chest, finding himself uh, keeled over more often and generally not at the level he was when his term first began. Naturally, the news of chest pains coming from an old man as old as himself uh, aroused some alarm in the cabinet and medical staff. A checkup. Clearly, the changes were, as of now, nothing to be alarmed about that it was primarily stress and old age getting to him and not any underlying condition. On top of his prior symptoms, however, this has arrived as no shortage uh, of discomfort for the president. Concerning. Oh my god, is it over yet? You are literally, you literally have a front line city here. Denver, well, Denver should fall sometime. Or if not, we can begin the next episode with that too. Can you guys actually start attacking here too? Yes, you can. They're trying so hard to win against us. It's not funny. Oh, uh, wait. Patriot Front's called in as their ally? Okay. Oh, never mind. They're fighting us too, which is actually one of the worst things that could possibly happen to us right now. Um, so I'm going to go back to the drawing board and see if we can maybe speed this up because we have no freaking possibility of us trying to even fight the, the American Nazis, really. They don't have a ton of divisions, but they do have quite a few, and enough that, uh, I'm, I'm going to have to replay this, aren't I? Um, get everyone on the job. Let's do these few more purposes. Oh, reunify the nation. Look at that. Huh. As the Trump forces continue to falter in the face of our onslaught, we have found ourselves once again out of control of a number of Midwestern states, with the progress westward slowly moving onward still. I was deliberate more and more territory from the traitors in the West, however, so it is the resistance from disgruntled civilian militias who will foolishly decide to stay behind and harass our garrison troopers. It's no secret that the populace of most rural areas have gained control over the, uh, either at best unsupportive of our presence, and at worst openly hostile and subversive. While the cities are usually a different story, we cannot simply rest on our laurels and put up with this difficult situation. Efforts will be made at lower rebellious activity across the recently captured territory, and a sense of legitimacy will once again soon start to return to the affected regions as we work to reintegrate these areas back into the fold of the federal government. Strategic destruction. The art of targeted destruction is about pivotal in any war, especially one taking place across such a vast battleground such as our own. As most half decent strategists will know, it is significantly harder to fight a war when your supplies, weaponry, and means to acquire them have been flattened to a rubble by a well placed bombing run. However, the master's method of targeting strides will have to be made to better suit carrying out such tactics against American based structures. Piles will be adjusted to targeting home terrain and updated on how it effectively operate in familiar territory. With enough effort, our bombers will become a dreaded sight for the enemy to behold, no matter how reinforced they may be. So, apologies we didn't get very far in this episode, but we pushed super hard, and then the Nazis started attacking. The Patriot Front is ungodly, like, well-organized, 
and have been slowly improving themselves and they constantly have tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of more uh, stuff going on here. So, yeah, Joe Biden is really hard to play as. Probably not as hard as Trump because this is really freaking hard, but oh well. We'll see in the next episode as I'll, I'll replay this and tr try to focus more on the picture front. Maybe we can naively invade them, maybe we can't. We'll see when we get there, but if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. I will continue uh, becoming a vegetable. Be smiley. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.